Hello everybody and welcome to Redstone Trivia! Woo! There are two ways to play this game. First off, you could go into my community tab on my YouTube channel and answer all the questions there. Or you can sit back, relax and just answer the questions as we go through them one by one. You can challenge your friends, you can write down all the answers on a piece of paper, or you can just type how many answers you got correctly in the comments at the end of the video. Let's go! Okay, first question reads, which block is not transparent? And with that we mean, which block will actually get powered by redstone, making one of those lamps turn on? An equal 43% of you either thought it was the dirt path or the furnace. What do you think? You can answer now. Alright, let's fire up this bad boy and see. It's the furnace! Congratulations if you are right on that one. Alright, the next question is a bit more tricky, because it has to do with comparators. The first picture here says that if we power a comparator with a strength of 15 in the front, and 14 in the side, this lamp is supposed to stay off. And that's 15 from the front and 14 from the side. Will this lamp stay off? The next one says that if we power this 14 from the front and 15 from the side, this lamp will stay off as well. So that's 14 from the front and 15 from the side. The last picture says that if we power this 14 from the front and 15 from the side, this lamp will turn on. Which one is correct? You can answer now. Alright, let's give him all a flick. Here, here and here and see. The correct one is the middle, number two! Even though that was a tricky question, actually 86% of you got that correct. Nice. And now to something a little less complicated. The third question is, what sound will this note block play when I press this button? Is it one, bass, two, bells, three, Guitar? Or is it for no sound? Do you know the answer? If you said bells, you're almost correct. But because of this dirt block, no sound is played. If you place a block on top of a no block, it won't play a sound. But of course, 83% of you already knew that. Well done. Time for question number four. How do you craft a redstone repeater? Is it like this? Like this? Like this? Or is it like this? You can answer now. All right, let's grab the ingredients and put it into a crafting table. And there you got it, the correct recipe for a repeater. So on to question number five. What does but stand for? Is it one, block update, two, block under direct, three, block update detector, or is it four? Bend use direct. You can answer now. The correct answer is block update detector. 75% of you knew that answer already. An observer is kind of also a block update detector and we can see they behave the same way right here. Two pulses, two updates. 
In contraptions, we tend to use node blocks because they update the pistons. And it realizes that it's actually powered from up here. The reason why pistons behave this way is actually because when Mojang put them in the game, they actually copied the code from a door. This means that the piston actually thinks that it's two blocks high, just like a door. So we can open the door like this, and we can make the piston move like this. But only if we update it. If we remove this threadstone dust completely, you'll see that the piston no longer gets updated. We can actually power it from one block away as well. We use this behavior in many contraptions, just like these doors, where we only have one line of redstone up here, but both of the pistons close and open. This is the exact same mechanic we use in the famous flush doors, where we can push this button and bomb flush with the wall. It works the exact same way. If we try to push an immovable object like this furnace here, then go and destroy the furnace, nothing will happen only when we update the piston. So yeah, I hope you learned something. For question number six, I want to know if you can tell me which one of these logic gates is an RS NOR latch. Is it this, 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 or this? You can answer now. The correct answer is this one here. If we push this button, nothing happens. But if we push this button, the signal switches over there. Then if we push this button again, nothing happens. And we'll have to push this button to get the signal to switch back. A smaller way to make this is to take two droppers and point them into each other. Take a comparator and put a button on each. If we then take an item and put in here and press this button, you'll see that this comparator switches on. That's because the button is now in this dropper and not here. If we then push this button again, nothing happens. But if we push here, it gets pushed back into this one. You can then of course also take in the comparator output here and you can have this going back and forth. It's called an RS NOR latch because the R stands for reset and the S means set. It's a NOR because it's either on or not. And it's a latch because it locks its output. So this is actually a one bit memory cell. This here is an AND gate because both this and this has to be turned on to get an output. This is a NOT gate and it's called that because it's inversive and the torches have to turn off Normally you only have one torch, but it didn't make a very good picture. And the final one here is a NAND gate, because it's an AND gate and made by two NOT gates. NAND. You see, logic gates are logical. Mm. For the next question I brought in those four fine gentlemen. Don't worry, they're just bots. They're not actually here. Because I want to know who invented the hopper clock. Is it a mango? Etho, Mumbo, or is it Impulse? You can answer now. And let's see, the inventor is... Etho! <laughs> but if you were one of those who answered on my community page, you definitely already knew the answer. Once again for question 8, I've spawned in two more epic gentlemen, DuckM77 and Tango of the Tech Variety, because this time I want to know who invented this item filter. Was it Impulse? Was it the Goat Master? Was it Ether once again? Or was it the Dungeon Master Tango Tech? You can answer now. Okay, let's see who invented the filter. It was Impulse! And everyone on my community page also knew that Impulse invented this filter. It's nice to see that all these creators actually get credit for the work. The filter is quite smart. It works by locking this bottom hopper here, and only when we get the right signal strength 
This repeater get powered, which will then unpower this torch and let items go through. And up here we have 18 of our desired item and 4 filter items, preferably renamed. When this then goes up to 19, the signal strength will go from 1 to 2 and baff. There you go. Filter. I just love that he just keeps on jumping over here. <laughs> Question 9 is, which button gives the longest signal? Is it the stone button, the wooden button, or does they give the same signal? You can answer now. Okay, let's give it a test. Let's try to go through this door. Excuse me, sir. Let's then try this door. No problem, there we go, that's the winner. And that's because the stone button only powers for 10 redstone ticks, whereas the wooden button actually gets powered for 15 redstone ticks. Always used for your iron doors. 67% of you already know the answer to that one as well. You people are on fire. And for the final question, I want to know which of these lamps is not correct. Is it this one? This one? Is it this? Or is it this? You can answer now. If you answer this, you're not correct. Cause it's actually this one over here. I have cheated a little by placing a lever down underneath and that's how I powered this. Just like with the wooden button, 67% of you also knew the answer to this one. Dope. And that was all for this time. Let me know down in the comments how many you got right. This video actually took so much longer to make than first anticipated cause I got sick in the meantime. So I would really appreciate it if you would give the video a like and maybe consider subscribing. But I hope you enjoyed it and until next time, have a good one.